Denver at the big 5G event. I'm here with James from ADVA. James, good to see you. You too, Ray. So, um, I mean, one of the topics of conversation here at the show is uh, virtualization, an important part of the, the, the bigger 5G story. Uh, but in the past sort of uh, six to eight months, there's been talk in, in the media, like, mm -hmm. like reading and in the industry, about whether NFV has like fulfilled its promises, whether it's actually delivered in what was uh, uh, discussed uh, at, at the beginning in the, in the white paper. What's Adver's view of the situation with NFV at the moment? Yeah, great question. So um, with us, we specialize in distributed NFV, uh, which in some ways is you know, the harder part of the equation, right? making it all work out remotely. Um, and it's fair to say it's taken a while. Big changes do. There's a lot of new technology involved uh, and a lot of changes to operational practice. Um, but at the same time, I feel very much we're on the upswing. I, I know um, at The Hague, for instance, there was speeches and relatively accurate coverages of those speeches bemoaning the state of affairs. Uh, and it was our view at the time that was already out of sync. Things were, were on the upswing. Um, as you see, tier one operators um, make selections in the NFV space, line up their UCP players, the hardware, the middleware, and the VNFs. It takes a while to operationalize. So there's usually a, a period, you know, three to six months if they're speedy, much more like nine to 18 months if they're typical, right. um, of how long it takes from sort of choice to launch. And we're in that phase with a large number of operators now. Um, and ones that you would think are even extremely conservative are now coming to the party. So I, I think it's actually going very well. Uh, it's just delayed relative to the news cycle. Okay, so the, the, these time frames for operationalizing a, a virtual network function, are those time scales starting to come down? I mean, is it different for some operators than others? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, so it's, I don't, there's two dimensions, right? So for the first launch, um, it really comes down to how practical the operator is. Uh, so some operators say, right, we're just going to do minimum viable product, we're going to get it out, we're going to get it working, and then we'll iterate from there. Colt is a great example of that. Um, okay. Others um, really have a very strong theory about how they want their end game to look like, and they want to start there. Um, so big OSS integrations, uh, lots of development cycle. Right. And you can't argue with that, they have sound business reasons for it, but that obviously takes a lot longer. Um, but either way, they tend to be quicker for the next load and the next load, right? It's becoming more familiar, you're not reinventing wheels okay. as much. So, I mean, it is clear that there are some, uh, or a growing number of early success stories, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's starting to, to come across different types of operators. Um, are there any particular, from the adverse point of view, are there any particular applications that, that you're seeing that are being uh, utilized and deployed by those early successes? To yeah, start. great question. So everywhere um, is SD-WAN. It's pretty much the lead application uh, for a UCPE story. In maybe 90%, 95% of those SD-WAN things, there's also a firewall UTM solution. That's deployed with it. Uh, and then after that, the, the histogram just drops off a cliff. WAN acceleration is probably the next one worth mentioning in right. a third or a quarter of the instances. Um, but really it's all about the very long tail. And that's I think what is valuable um, in the UCPE space in that it's just general purpose compute. If your end customer wants application X, Y, or Z, they can have it, just add it to the chain. Um, there's no reason to say no. Uh, so that's exciting and I'd say maybe the other thing that's uh, becoming common uh, is the discussion of end customer tenancy. So where the managed service provider says, okay, well I've got staff trained on applications A, B, and C. This other one, I don't know anything about it, but I will offer you platform as a service. You can run it in the service chain, but it's yours, right? I'm a cloud right. provider to you. Um, so that is becoming quite common um, right. as an application scenario. Okay, right, so essentially the market is becoming a little bit more familiar with how different things can work and, and different elements are, are starting to come together that are making more things possible. Exactly right, yep. Okay. Um, yep. Well great, well hopefully, I'm sure we'll hear probably more success uh, stories as we go through yes. 2019. Absolutely, and hopefully we can catch up later in the year and, and, and talk about what the next applications are and, and which hurdles have been overcome then. Look forward to James, it. James, thanks very much. Thank you.